Hallelujah. Again this day, we are coming to the presence of Jesus. I tell you, we come to the feet of Jesus. We sit at the, the Jesus' feet. And when we are at the feet of Jesus, we are seeing Jesus. We are hearing from Jesus. We are talking to Jesus. We are meditating his words. And uh, today, uh, I want to take a passage from the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 1, verse 5 to 11. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you, because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you, because you hold me in your heart, for all of you share in God's grace with me both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best, so that on the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. Good. See, here, especially uh, when we read uh, verse 5, we read, Because of your partnership in the gospel from the very first day until now, and I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. So it's Paul speaks about the people in Philippi and Paul speaks that God has begun a good work in you. God has begun a good work in you. And God is very careful and he is always working on you. God is working on you. You know why? Because he has a plan for you, a design for you. And that comes to a conclusion only at the day of Jesus Christ. That is the biggest problem and that is the thing that we need to understand. It says that one day when Jesus comes, the work that God has started or begun in you will be completed. It is like a picture. When a painter is painting a picture of somebody, I have uh, written something like, you know, a, a story of a painter. Let us call him Sunil. So he wanted to paint the picture of a young boy. And he asked the boy to sit there and he said, you sit here, I'm going to draw your picture, paint your face on this uh, canvas. And you know, he took the brush and uh, all the colors and he put some strokes here, there, here, there. And the boy was looking and he couldn't find any relevance of those strokes or you know, the different colors. And uh, after some time, he said, sir, that's not me. You said that you're going to throw my picture, but that's not me. And the painter said, boy, sit down, cool down. I'm still working on you. Now you cannot understand what is in my mind. So I'm, I'm making it. I have a design in my mind, and you will understand it only when I finish it. Paul says, this is exactly an example for our life or the life of everybody who is born of God. When we are born again, God has a design for us. And God is working on us. And he is doing a lot of things in our life which seems no relevance. You understand what I say? 
the boy when he was seeing the black uh, uh, line there and the red strike a stroke here and things like that he said it doesn't make any any sense you said that you're making my face but you know uh, it's not my face no relevance it's the same sometimes you know many of the things that happens in our life uh, we cannot find any relevance or you know we think that you know, what god is doing he says that i'm going to do something good what is good in the, the in this when sometimes a disease is afflicted we are afflicted with a disease uh, maybe sometimes you know big disease uh, or sometimes a, a, a kind of failure we expected a great success but you know failure maybe in the business or uh, in studies of our children or maybe sometimes we are losing our job or you know anything anything and sometimes you know we are mis misunderstood by others okay and sometimes you know that happens and we are asking lord why why this is happening to me why what is the relevance what are you going to do with this what is good in it you get my point many times we are asking these questions everybody everybody has some kind of problems and we are complaining i don't i don't think there is any relevance i don't find any relevance in these things and that's the reason why many people complain why god has done it to me and that is natural because you know we are human beings i always say uh, don't play super spiritual nothing like that you know sometimes we are fearful sometimes we are uh, afflicted sometimes we cannot bear things many times you know we have struggles we need to accept it's a reality it's a reality you get me it's a reality it's a, it this is what is happening this is what is happening because we we may not be able to see the truth beyond reality that's a problem so when, real, everything is a reality when you are hungry that is a reality right when you are hot that is a reality when you have pain that's a reality and maybe you will cry if you feel cry you just cry because that's a reality and uh, uh, if you do not know the truth beyond your experience maybe you will complain and maybe uh, you will ask god why and sometimes people say don't ask questions to god no i say you ask questions no problem if you ask questions don't think that god is going to punish you because you ask question if that is the case he should punish jesus because at the cross he was even asking question right why god why you have forsaken me as a question right he asked if jesus could ask question to his father then certainly we can ask questions no problem you get me my friends but the thing is there is something beyond be cool god is still working on you he has a beautiful picture in his mind allow him to finish it we are always complaining because we are not seeing the complete picture we see things partially and we are complaining we are human beings and god will not punish you just because you ask the question and things like that but i say it is good if you can go beyond your experience and see the truths that's why paul says here that you know god has something in your mind and he has begun a good work in you and he will finish it he will complete it i'm sure of this that he who began a good work in you will bring to it bring it to completion at the day of jesus christ what does it mean only at the day of jesus christ we will know what was in the mind of jesus all the things that is happening in between you know jesus is god is you know making uh, or you know putting a, a stroke or a line or something like that which seems irrelevant to us but it fits 
in the picture or the design of God. So, we need to understand that Paul is writing this letter when he was in prison. That's the, <laughs> the, the uh, thing that we need to understand. He was not writing it in an air-conditioned room. He was not writing it when he was uh, getting all kind of honor and uh, everything. He was in the prison when he was writing this book. And even when he was in prison, he says, even my prison has a relevance. When I was shut in the prison, I thought this is irrelevant. But I know that there is a relevance for my prison in the eyes of God because that is perfectly fitting to the design God has in his mind. That's what he says. In verse uh, 12 onwards when we read, he says, I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. See, when you are shut inside a prison, do you think that it will work as a means to advance gospel? Naturally, we say, when I'm in prison, when I, when I, I am shut down in a prison, that is a hindrance to the advancement of gospel, right? Naturally. That's a hindrance for the advancement of gospel. That's the only thing we will say. But Paul says, no, even my imprisonment, it was a, a cause or a reason for the advancement of gospel. I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. See, all the soldiers, they were asking why this man is in the prison. He is not a murderer. He, has, he, he is not a thief. He did not rape somebody. He did not uh, loot somebody. He didn't do any wrong. Then why? He is in the prison. And people say, you know why he is in the prison? He is in the prison because of Jesus. Jesus? Who is that? Why he is in the prison? Because he preached Jesus. What he is preaching? And people started hearing about the preaching of Jesus. And maybe many of the guards were coming to Paul and say, Paul, I heard that you preached some new religion and that's the reason why you are in the prison. What is your new religion? And it gave a chance for Paul to preach to all the guards. You get my point? That's what he said. And most of the brothers, see, so verse 13, so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. Now everybody knows that I am in the prison for Christ and everybody has heard the gospel and my imprisonment that happened to me, what happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. See, this is the design of Jesus. That's why I say, anything that happens in our life, even if it is imprisonment, that will serve as an advancement or, you know, that, that, uh, that really serve to advance the gospel. So God has a purpose for everything. God has a purpose for everything. Even when you are afflicted, God has a purpose for everything. Even when you are in the prison, many of you know that one of our missionary was in the prison for some time. And when he was inside the prison, he found that some of the Bibles that we gave in the prison, we used to give Bibles in the prison, that were not distributed or, you know, that was in a, a room. And he found it. And you know what happened? He took it and he kept it with him. And he started giving it to all the people. And the other prisoners with him, they were looking at our missionary 
and he was singing songs and praying and they were wondering he is not cursing he is not using bad words and they started coming to him and asked hey why you are not cursing why you are singing songs because he said because i am a missionary I'm, i serve jesus i cannot cry here i'm happy you are happy because you are in the prison i am happy not because i am in the prison i am happy because i am in the prison for jesus i am happy because jesus is with me even inside the prison you know what happened after some time all these prisoners started coming to him and they knelt down and they said please pray for me please pray for me and inside the prison it was an advancement of gospel so about paul that happened it is not just about paul even now even now see even when we are afflicted even when we have troubles when we have trials sometimes you know people ask why this happened to me and many times even in my life i had a lot of struggles and i thank god because now i can console the people who are going through the same struggles i was meeting death face to face so now i can uh, when when i'm meeting people like that i can say even i have gone through this kind of experiences i have been persecuted by fanatics so i could give i, I could console my missionaries when they are persecuted i was taken by the police yeah so i can tell some of my missionaries when they are taken by the police i can say yes even i had the same experience so those days it was hard but you know that became uh, it, that that god it, that was god's design and you know now when we look back we understand that it was all for good so he has started a good work in us take the case of john bennion you know you all know john bennion who wrote the book pilgrim progress you know uh, when he wrote the pilgrim progress when he was in the prison so he spent his time in prison and he was not wasting his time rather he was writing a book pilgrim progress and which was a giving uh, you know uh, a, a guideline to millions not thousands millions and millions of people one of the books that is most read other than bible pilgrim progress when john bunyan was inside the prison he maybe he asked why god i am here but now we know that god was giving him a chance to write a book at the expense of the government right he was eating <laughs> he was inside the prison eating the food that was given by the government take it in that way so god has a design for us so that's what i want to say and uh, even when we see uh, read about the stories that happened at the persecution of the roman empire you know many people were burned alive and many people were thrown in the den of lions and uh, i have heard i have read that many soldiers accepted jesus because they saw the courage of the saints when they were meeting death face to face and it is said that they were singing when they were dying they were not crying they were singing and that was something that made the authorities mad and even the king said why they are singing when they are dying so that gave a chance for people to share gospel to the people so what i said the afflictions that we have maybe sometimes it will be a cause for Uh, the advancement of gospel and the bible says in ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 that we are the workmanship of god poema workmanship that's a word uh, which is uh, which denotes the work of a weaver the weaver he just have some bundles of thread 
but he has a design in his mind. When somebody looks at uh, what he is doing, they are seeing just a few bundles of different bundles of thread uh, with different colors, right? But there is a design in his mind. And after some time, when we look at it, we see beautiful carpet, beautiful dress, colorful. You get me? The Bible says we are the poema or the workmanship of God. When people look at us, it's just like some bundles of thread. But I tell you, God has a design. God has a design about you and me. God has a design in his mind. And the design, it becomes a, you know, it ends or, you know, that, that comes to a, con a, a completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Till that day, maybe we cannot say what is in the mind of God. But God has something beautiful about you. And he is still working on you. And he is still working on you. And that's what we want to understand that uh, uh, God is always thinking about us. And you know, he is uh, even, even the minute thread, you know, the weaver. That's the reason why I said about the weaver. The weaver, you know, some thread, it goes only, there's some color, it maybe um, many threads are there, some special colors, uh, maybe not much threads, only two or three threads. But when it goes through, according to his design, you know, that, that makes the picture so beautiful. So at the day of Jesus Christ, when we reach eternity, we will know that everything that happened in our life, maybe that is a disease, I told you, an affliction, anything, we do not know, but maybe that is a golden thread, a golden thread that makes our life beautiful. When we reach there, that's what we see there. In verse 10, uh, we see uh, so that we may approve. See, that's what Paul says. Uh, uh, verse 9 onwards, and it is my prayer that you, your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent, and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. So, when we reach God, see, we need to see that we are approved. Our excellence is approved. So we need to be obedient to God for that. Don't say, don't do that in my life. Don't say it to Jesus. Don't say it to God. Lord, I cannot bear it. Yes, it is difficult. But God, he will give you the, the power to bear it. Because the Bible promises that God will never test you beyond your capacity. So what all things, everything and anything that happens in your life, be cool. It's, it's difficult, it's difficult. I'm not saying that it is, it is easy, but be cool. And whenever you face a struggle, a trouble in your life, understand that God is still working on you. And one day, it will come to a conclusion. There's a song like this. It says, something beautiful, something good. All your confusion he understands. All you have to offer him is brokenness and scrap. God is not asking you to give him big, big things. He is asking you to give your brokenness and scrap. You know scrap, right? Something that, that doesn't have any value. Scrap. But give it to God. Sometimes we say, oh, I'm just like scrap. There's nothing beautiful in me. Don't worry. Give the scrap to God. Give your brokenness to God. Give your brokenness to God. And He will do something beautiful in you. This day I ask you, my friends, give your brokenness to God. Give your scrap to God. 
He's still working on you. Something beautiful he is going to make at the day of Christ that will come to conclusion. He's still working on you. Let's close our eyes. Lord, we come to your presence of God. Many times the things that is happening in our life, the afflictions that we have, the confusion that we have, we don't understand. But Lord, we know you can make it beautiful. We give our brokenness to your God. We give our the scrap, only the scrap of God. That's the only thing that we have. But Lord, we know that you're going to make something beautiful. And Lord, we are looking for the day of Jesus, the day of Lord, the Lord. That Lord, we know that everything will come to a completion in that day. And thank you, Jesus, because you are working on us. We know that you will make it beautiful. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.